I believe that having a connection to your food is extremely important. To watch an animal's birth, be there for every growth spurt, every feeding, and eventually be the one to appreciate and understand the sacrifice is really a beautiful thing. When Ashlyn and I moved across the country, we had one goal in mind, to grow our own food. We like to take the let's throw ourselves at it and learn as we go approach, so that's exactly what we did. We wanted to raise our own meat source, but we didn't like the idea of having to buy feeders every single time we wanted to raise a hog. So we decided to get some Idaho pasture pigs that we could breed, and from those litters we would keep one or two for our pork production. The rest would be sold, which essentially paid for our pork. I'm not sure I fully understood at this time that this piglet would be born on our farm, would be grown on our farm, and would be butchered on this farm. At no point in this pig's life did it deal with the stress of being ripped away from his mother too early, or placed on a trailer and shipped a thousand miles, or packed into a cage without direct sunlight and fresh air. The only thing this pig knew was our farm, and that makes me happy. The life of a feeder pig is anywhere between 6 and 10 months, and it's amazing how quickly that time goes by. One moment he's a cute little piglet, and the next he's a big 200 pound beast ready to eat everything in sight. We tend to have a lot of piglets on our farm, usually in spring and early fall we've got at least a dozen or two running around. It makes for some really fun times filled with pets, pictures, and new beginnings. As the pigs get older they become curious, sniffing your hands and taking a nibble every once in a while. They start to steal mom's grain, but still like to wash it down with some milk. It's amazing how quickly they pick up on how to be a pig. If they watch mom do it, they end up doing it too. Eventually, the piglets get so big and obnoxious that mom can't take it anymore. She's tired of her nipples getting tugged on and wants all the grain to herself. At this point, we separate the piglets and we take them off mom. Mom gets some time to herself and the piglets get to be as rambunctious as they'd like. Piglets like to play and fight just like we did when we were kids. Well, we've only got six piglets left in here. All the rest have gone to their forever homes and we'll be keeping two of them. This little lady right here, that's Marigold. And then I think we're going to be keeping that guy right in the back. For some reason, they just absolutely love playing with the little scooper. Maybe I need to get a little ball to throw in here so they can roll it around. You want to play fetch? Go get it. That didn't work. Hey there, Marigold. Hey there. This light one is Marigold. We're keeping her for breeding stock. And then that little guy right there, uh, Ashley named him Bacon because, well, he's going to be Bacon. Once the piglets have been separated, it's time for mom and dad to meet again. This time on a nice fresh piece of forest full of all the green they can eat. With all our animals, we move them around to different areas of our farm. With pigs, we tend to put them in areas we need cleared out. Moving pigs like this is a lot of work. Setting up posts, running wire, and making sure they are secure takes up a lot of time, but it is always worth it. It doesn't take long until the sow is back in heat again and bred for a spring litter. Pigs have a gestation period of about 120 days. That's some chickweed. That's some something. <laughs> the piglets, which at this point there are two, get their own little slice of soil. We run all of our pigs on a single strand electric wire, so it's imperative that we train them to it at a young age. We like to keep them close to where they were born while we take them through this process. Young piglets are so funny. They're really sporadic and they jump around like crazy and you touch them and they go a little wild and they've got themselves a pretty good mud pit here, but they're growing out pretty nice. I'm excited to raise bacon up and butcher him and put him in the freezer. I'm excited to smoke some meat, smoke some ham, smoke some bacon, make some Italian sausage. Really looking forward to that. Man, these guys always spill their food. What a bunch of pigs. We use our Idaho pasture pigs for a lot of reasons. These guys are cleaning up our forests. Bert and Penelope here have a different job to turn this sawdust, hay, and cow pies into compost. In the spring, summer, or early fall, their primary diet is this or this with a little bit of this on the side. I love running our pigs in the forest and on pasture, but in the fall and the winter time when all this greenery goes away, to avoid a high feed bill, we're growing them food in the ground. We decided to plant some food plots for our pigs in an area where we farrow the moms. That way they're not penned up the whole time and we can give the piglets some space to root, forage, and be a young pig. We planted ryegrass in some areas and in others we decided to plant a mixture of turnips and rye. 
Pigs love ryegrass. The first time I saw a pig grazing like a cow, I thought I was going crazy. Turnips are coming in really nice. Ryegrass is coming in really nice. They're not beating each other out. They're coming up at the same time. It's perfect. Pigs love their grain. They love their food scraps, but I wanted to see if I could grow them food right there on farm. The turnips grew in very well, but the pigs did not like to eat them. It didn't matter if it was ripe, mashed, or cooked. These guys were not interested in it. Life is full of learning lessons. As time went on, the piglets got bigger and bigger and ate more and more feed, but they were just as spunky as when they were babies. Eventually, they understood the power of the electric wire and graduated from their training pen to a nice fresh piece of ground. But there was no free lunch. They had a job and that was to clear this piece of forest that was filled with brambles and downed trees which kept me from cleaning it up with the tractor. It doesn't take long for these guys to turn a thick forest into a cleared piece of land. Come fall, we had three litters on the ground totaling 19 piglets, one of which is next year's pork. We fed them all of our leftover pumpkins which is also a natural dewormer. These piglets were getting close to weaning age and we had a plan. Our back pasture needed some major work. It was overgrazed and left to grow for many years. It seemed like the only thing growing back there was goldenrod. So instead of keeping our pigs in a winter pasture, we decided to take on the muddy job of rotationally grazing three groups of pigs all winter long, allowing them to till it up and expose the ground so we could come behind them and seed it for spring. To do this, we needed to build some structures, set up some fencing, and provide water. This was a big job, and it still is. We are still currently moving these pigs through these poor pastures as I'm making this video. Moving the pigs to the back of the property was a challenge in and of itself. Well, that was a complete disaster. It went just about as bad as we could have expected. We still had a few feeder piglets that hadn't sold as well as our feeder and two others that we were raising for someone else. Well, we got the piglets in. This is bacon. We all know what he's for. Seems to be pretty nice with the piglets. They'll find their place. Having animals on pasture just feels right. That's probably because it is. These pigs were born for this. This is where they thrive. No one can ever convince me that a concrete floor is going to be more beneficial for them than a nice piece of dirt for them to dig in. At some point, we even grew some grains for the pigs. They grew really well, but honestly, it was way too much work for it to be very sustainable. As time went on, we kept moving the pigs. Our goal was to till up six acres by the end of the winter. I would have to stay very consistent with their moves, usually every seven to 10 days, but sometimes the rain and mud kept us from moving. Those little piglets you saw being born at the beginning of the video weren't so little now. Bacon was coming up on his butcher date and Marigold was getting old enough to breed. It has been a long 10 months, but the time has come to take Bacon to freezer camp. For some of you, this may just look like a guy butchering a pig, but for me, it's much more than that. It's 10 months of twice a day feeding, it's countless moves, it's the successes and failures we faced, and it's the consistency it took to get it done. You're probably wondering what it's like to watch an animal give birth, provide and care for it, watch it grow up, and then use that animal to feed your family. It's powerful. I hate looking at the shelves of meat at the grocery store because all I can think about is the lack of life that animal must have had. Sure it lived, but did it really? Our pigs have the opportunity to do what a pig does best, root up the ground, wallow in the mud, and eat everything in sight. The majority of the pork you see at the store spent its days on concrete floors and four walls because the farmer didn't want to deal with the mud. The beautiful part about being a consumer is the power you have. The choices you make, the places you go, and the things you buy have more say in what happens in this world than you'd think. If I could dream big for just a moment and block out any piece of reality, I hope someday all families grow their own food or know their local farmer and families can sit down around the table feasting on the most nutrient-rich food, knowing exactly what life this animal lived and appreciating the sacrifice it made. Our food is everything. Without it, we would die. So we should all feel a responsibility to provide our bodies with the highest quality food by giving our food the best possible life. Thank you so much for watching. We will see you in the next one. Look at that. This is working out great.